So I got this new Nanlite uh, Pavo tube. This thing's freaking amazing. So that's what I'm using for lighting above me. I just got my window open. But anyways, Dehancer. Now, a lot of you guys know I love my film emulation tools and I use Film Convert heavily. Uh, the one thing with Film Convert is you really gotta like mess with it and do a grade on top of it to really get it to that filmic look. Now, this new plugin, Dehancer, just off the bat, this video is just going to be an overview of this. I'm going to try to break down a little bit on how I've been using it and how it's been helping me. I'll do another video though comparing it to Film Convert because uh, I believe they both have two totally different uses and I jump back and forth depending on what the project is. Now for this project, uh, this was a trailer for a documentary that we're just starting and I was given a lot of previous footage from them. It's a mix of drone footage footage that we shot on the red Komodo, and then some footage from broadcasting cameras that they had. Um, and so you'll see that this footage doesn't look all that great. And so I decided to go with a very filmic color grade on here. It didn't need to be clean and like commercial looking. And so I was able to cheat it with Dehancer because they have tools where you can add glow and halation and all that. There's just a lot of filmic tools in here. Um, so let's just get straight into it. Let's start off with this shot right here. Now I have these other nodes turned off around here. So you see this is my final shot right there, but let's turn those off. So let me just walk you through this and then we'll do an actual grade after this. But you see we have our camera profiles. Currently they do not have a Komodo profile, so I'm just using the Helium one, but it's the same format, the same IPP2 uh, pipeline setup. So it works just fine. Let's run through the film profiles. I pretty much just use the Kodak Vision 3. I have used the Portra one and it's pretty great. Again, I will say that the biggest difference between this and Film Convert is Film Convert gets your footage to a good, like negative Kodak raw look that you can grade on top of and kind of take it where you want it. I would say Dehancer kind of gets you more to a, like a film print look. But with that, all the tools that they have in here are like, a heavy throwback to the same exact tools that they would use to actually develop and scan and print and color grade their film stocks back in the day. Again, I'm using the Vision 3 on here. The Portrait one I like on here a lot too. I will break down all these expand tools here. Uh, you see we have these print tools here. Tonal contrast, this adds just really cool contrast to your shot uh, without like crushing your black or white points. Uh, and that's also because I have the analog range limiter on. Again, we'll go through all this. Color density kind of acts like a like a color boost or virusing tool, except it actually adds density to the colors. Say if you have the color blue, the brighter you make that blue, the less saturated it looks. The lower you make that blue, the more saturated it looks. So this color density is kind of doing a dance between that. And again, these are all like throwbacks to actual like film tools that they that they use uh, when working with film. We have our color head. This is kind of um, the best way I could dumb this down is it's kind of like a white balance and tint tool. Dehancer might hate that I described it as that, but it basically lets you adjust your hues over here. So we'll, again, we'll go through this. Uh, it gets really intensive. Film grain, I love the film converts film grain, but this does even a better job on making it look like there's depth to the film. I know film convert uses like film scans on there, but I would say that the Dehancer one does a little bit better job on making it look like it's in the shot, like the grain's in there. But again, with that said, this is a lot more intensive on your computer to use uh, compared to film convert. So that's a big thing on why I use it sometimes and I don't use it on other things. Halation, so halation is this kind of thing where when you're shooting on film, sometimes highlights get like this color, like I want to say like a halo around the highlight. It's a combination of like your lens and the film stocks and like the layers within the film stock that creates like this weird look. Even when I'm shooting like medium format photo film, you'll see on the outside of the film borders where it's black, there's light leak that even goes onto there. That's like part of the halation of the film. Uh, this has been like a big thing that I've been searching for because it kind of just gives you like, like if you love the look of like a Tarantino movie because he shoots all the stuff on film and you see all that halation and all that kind of stuff, this tool will kind of give you that look. Bloom basically is like how we're all using diffusion filters to kind of take the digital edge off the like these amazing cameras that we have. Um, Bloom kind of does the digital version of that. And in the past I have used other tricks and like workflows and plugins to get this look, but this Bloom tool pretty much has been the best thing that I've used to get like a real life bloom look out of it. Like you did it in camera almost. Now you can use just this tool to get 
an insane look. All that is on the shot right now is the plugin itself. There's no, there's nothing else on here, but you'll see, I will create a node before there. And it's just so I can kind of uh, have a little bit more control over what my shadows and highlights are doing. And then I will put a light grade on top of it. And that's what that final node is. Um, so you see just three nodes, that's all it takes. Uh, now, before we go and grade a shot, let me show you guys um, how it worked on these broadcasting shots over here. So you see my whole computer is running laggy because I am recording the screen, but on top of that, this plugin is intensive. And what's cool is you see the shot with nothing on it. Those highlights are all blown out. It doesn't look that great. So I use the bloom inhalation tool. So you see all the whites getting this cool halation look and we have a soft bloom. It kind of just softens the whole image out and it takes that broadcasty like digital camera look off of it. So those highlights are blown. So there's nothing that we could do about that. So you'll see on my grade, I go and I just bring down those highlights even more. I probably brought them down a little bit too much, but it's a quick clip in there. And then you see the node before I'm just recovering some shadows. It's not really shadows. I'm kind of just lifting the blacks because there's not a whole lot of info in there. Show you guys a couple more shots from it real quick before we go on grade. So you see it has, it's just a beautiful look out of it. Again, I can get this look on film cover. I can make this happen, but it takes a lot more work and a lot more adjustments to get it here. For specific projects, I won't use dehancers just because of how intensive it is on the processor. Uh, and then we have this shot right here. So you see we got nothing on here. So let's go throw a dehancer on. Another cool thing too is when you want to add like a new camera profile, you don't have to go to the website and do all that stuff. It's almost like a one click button. It was kind of crazy how easy it was to set up. Here we go, you see there's a shot right there. Let's click on auto expand. And film convert, we have like our sitting on the print and our color uh, meters that we can kind of adjust. But you see from here, just off the bat, we're getting a really good contrast already. Uh, let's go through the different uh, film stocks real quick. We'll stick with the daylight ones for this. 50D actually looks really good on here. Let's go to Portra. Here's the Portra 800, Portra 400, Portrait Vivid Color. Portra, I forgot what NC was, and just the standard Portra 160. Uh, but let's just stick to the Vision 3, the 250D. The reason I like the 250D is because it gives me like that till look, uh, but the 50D does look really good on there, but we'll just again stick the 250D. You see we have push and pull. If you guys are uh, familiar with film, this pretty much does the same thing. Uh, I, I won't go too much into explaining all that. There's lots of other videos about pushing and pulling film. We have our, our uh, black and white points so you can adjust it. I'm, let me just turn off auto expand. Basically what this does is you can set your black and white points. Um, so look, you can see we can lift or we can lower our white points on there. Uh, or you could do analyze current frame. Just make sure if you're doing this, you're on the frame that matters the most in your shot. Uh, say if you're having like backlighting or somewhere kind of shadows, you need to pick what spot's the best for that. When you're choosing your film, if you just do auto expand, it automatically sets that for you. Uh, so you won't have to worry about that. So I trust the auto expand. It hasn't done me wrong. Uh, if it does something too hot, you could just go and lower it yourself if you need to. Now our print, this is where we could start making our adjustments. So I usually start with tonal contrast. Add some contrast in there. Then I'm going to lower my exposure a little bit. And then we go up here and see our black points are getting crushed. So I'm going to lift those back up a little bit. And then color density. Color density is like this huge thing for me. In Film Convert, I would have to go into a node before Film Convert and do a color boost to try to emulate the look of it. With color density, basically, say if we have the color blue, the brighter you make that color blue, the less desaturated it looks. It lose saturation. The deeper you make that, that blue look, the more saturated it's gonna look. So when we go to our color density tool, you'll see it kind of does that. Like look at his skin tones. You see how they're brighter there. And as we saturate them, they get a little bit more deeper in the saturation. This is like one of my favorite parts about this. Um, also the analog range limiter. So as we were turning up our tonal contrast and we had to lift our blacks back up, we could reset that now. And so when you use the analog range limiter, when you bump that contrast up, it's going to save those black points and your white points. So you don't have to go back and mess with this, but I'm still going to just because I want to lift those blacks a little bit more. Okay, color head. So this is like a must on every shot. 
if you can copy your grade over to the next shot, but you need to go to your color head and make sure that this is accurate because this will give you the best results. So you see our shots a bit green, pump some of the green out of there. And then you see it's a bit red. So I'm going to put some cyan back into there and the blue, I don't think the blue needs to be adjusted, but if you want to get creative with it, you could mess with that if you wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it as is the film grain. I mean, that's obvious. This is up to taste. I won't go too much into that. Uh, one thing is they have the film resolution. Uh, film convert has something similar to this too, where you see we can lower this and it'll just soften the image below the film or you could raise it. I like raising it because I still want kind of a high end look on there. And then you could just adjust on where the grain goes into your shadow midtones and highlights. Halation, again, I don't think the shot really needs halation, but let's pump it up just so you guys can see what it does. So if you look right here, study that spot right there. I'm gonna disable it, enable it. Also, you can look around here. Pretty much in the late 90s to early 2000s, they were able to start digitally color grading film. So you start seeing less of like this halation kind of stuff in there. Bloom, again, I don't think we need bloom on here, but you see what it does, just kind of softens it. I know a lot of you guys love that look. I like kind of a cleaner look. Um, and so from here, I'm going to create a node before this and I just want to control my highlights a little bit more. So I'm just going to go to my HDR tools. I'm going to lower that down a little bit and then I'm going to go to a node after and I'm just going to put a grade on top of what's going on in here. So I'm just going to put some till in there. I'm going to warm up my highlights a little bit. I'm going to lower my gamma down a little bit. Let's lift our shadows up. Just a hair. So now we go back into here and then we can lift our black points up a little bit more. So we can see what my gray just did. So that's pretty much it. Like that's all I really do. If you want, if you really want to boost up your colors, you go in, boost up the colors a little bit more. And there you go. That's our shot right there. So guys, that's pretty much it for that though. Uh, I will have a couple more videos coming out about this. One, comparing it to film cover on the same shots, just to show you guys uh, what's the best usage is for it. I will say that film cover I can use on a 4k timeline with the grain pumped all the way up with no issues. Uh, so you guys can see right there, there's just certain projects that you want to use film convert on other projects where this will be your go-to. If you guys have any questions, let me know. They did provide me with the code. So you guys get 10% off. The code is Cam Hanser. I will put it in the description. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Just leave them down in the comments. Uh, if you have any video ideas for me that I should do around this or just anything that you're curious about. But uh, yeah, guys, that's it.